September is TGRF next. Sorry for the summer break, but we didn't want to see you over the summer. <laughs> Kidding, sort of. Uh, welcome to Magnet Forensics. We have guest Wi-Fi if you need it, which if you're using a computer, you might. Gavin is awesome, and he has decided to talk to us about penguins and cats. Yep, pretty much. Um, support. That's all you got. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So as you can see, this is Linux, and you can do C sharp on that. Thank you. Good night. Put it on YouTube. <laughs> Let me open up my little slideshow. <laughs> my name is Gavin Kendall. You can okay. contact me at gavin.kendall at hackernest.com. If you have not been to a Hackernest event, I highly recommend that you come to one because there's lots of beer, lots of people, everybody has fun, chit chat, all that kind of stuff. There's cake. There's cake as well. There was cake. Yeah, last night there was cake. We had Hackernest at uh, Community Tech. And uh, we had about, how many people do we have, Morris? 210. 210 wow. people. Why was there cake, Gavin? Because it's my birthday on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably wondering too why I sound a little bit different from most people that you meet. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm from Australia. <laughs> so, I'm here to talk about C Sharp in Linux. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody here knows C Sharp. Yeah. C Sharp? Yeah, C Sharp's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming not many people here have dabbled in Linux or got into Linux. I certainly dabbled with Linux back in my university days, and then after that, I started a career in as a C-sharp developer, and all I did was work with Microsoft Technologies. And I've been doing that for the past 10 years. And I hate it, because <laughs> Microsoft being the evil company that uh, I was grown up to believe, um, they make bad business decisions, uh, they always screw something up. Every time they release a new version of Windows, there's always something that's like, oh my god, they've changed something again, and say, like, oh, it's not like the last version. And, oh, now we can get more viruses and stuff like that. So I decided to go on a journey to switch from Windows to Linux. But I'm a C Sharp developer. And that's very difficult because, especially in this area, you have a lot of people who use Ruby and Python and all those awesome scripting languages and it's all in Linux. So anyway, I jumped in, figured, yeah, why not? So when you're trying to get into the mindset of programming in Linux, you have to understand penguins. Penguins are birds, <coughs> they live in very cold places, and they're very cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep a track of that for later. <laughs> so a little background on C Sharp. It was created by this guy here, Anders Hausberg. It actually began uh, in 1999, codenamed Cool, which stands for C-like object-oriented language. Then around 2000, mid-2000, Microsoft took notice and figured, hey, this is actually a pretty cool language. You know, because it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, well, why don't we introduce this in Visual Studio? So C Sharp was first introduced in Visual Studio 2002. Everybody got so excited about it, especially all the people who, who had backgrounds in C and C++, because now you could write C-style code using the Microsoft.NET library. I grew up writing C++ programs. I accidentally got into C Sharp just because my first job happened to use C Sharp and VB. I didn't like VB, so I stuck with C Sharp. And then I've been with C Sharp ever since. I like to think of C Sharp as the mutant love child of C and Java. Java sucks. <laughs> uh, little background on Linux, created by this wonderful person, Linus Torvalds. He uploaded the very first version of Linux to an FTP server in 1991. And he basically said to everybody, hey, look, I'm making a new operating system. It's free. Uh, you know, if anybody wants to chip in and help out, you can. 
just download a copy and uh, let's get together and make something great. Now, the funny thing about this is that when he uploaded it to the FTP server, the administrator of the FTP server didn't like his original name, which was something called Freaks, Freaks, or something weird like that. So he thought, oh, well, Linus, oh well, I'll just put an X there and say Linux, and then the name stuck. Now, a lot of people think Linux is based on Unix. If you know about Unix, especially you Mac users, Unix is that very old operating system from the 60s. It is fantastic. It runs on mainframes and supercomputers. That's great. Linux, however, doesn't have any ties to Unix. It actually has more ties to Linux. Minix was developed by Linus's teacher, Professor Andrew S. Tannenbaum. He is a professor in operating systems and kernel design. Uh, he happened to be a student at the University of Helsinki and he decided, well, I'm going to make my own version of Minix and one fateful night, he accidentally deleted one of his partitions. So he figured, well, I've already started on a kernel, I might as well keep going and I'll make an operating system. And then eventually everybody in the university started using his operating system a lot more than Minix, which pissed off the professor, but hey, that's how it goes. <laughs> this is actually a pretty cool photo. This is Linux version 0.12 on five and a quarter inch floppy disks if you're old enough to remember them. It's a floppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that save icon, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why choose Linux? It's free. Just like the free beer that we serve at Hackiness. <laughs> <coughs> you don't need to be a nerd to use Linux, but it's okay if you are. So what do you need to get started with C-sharp and Linux? Well, first of all, you need a Linux distro or distribution. There are different flavors. Apart from Microsoft's wonderful operating system, there's only one flavor. With Linux, you've got a choice of hundreds of different versions of Linux. These are the six most popular versions of Linux. I prefer this one, um, but feel free to try any of the others. They have actually matured quite a lot over the years. I started with Slackware back in university, and it was terrible because you had to try and find the right hardware to fit with Slackware, and then if you couldn't find the right hardware, you tried another version of Linux, and it just kept swapping out drivers and stuff like that. It was very, very messy. Nowadays, Linux can run on pretty much anything. It's very mature, it's powerful, and everybody chips in and submits their code to the kernel and basically develops it into a much better operating system over the years. That little penguin up there, his name is Tux, Tux the Penguin, he's the mascot of Linux. Um, and of course, when you are developing in Linux, you need an integrated development environment. The most mature one that I could find on Linux is called MonoDevelop. It's very much like Visual Studio, so for those of you who are like me, you come from a Microsoft background, you'll actually find MonoDevelop to be pretty cool. Now, to get MonoDevelop in Linux, most Linux distributions have what they call a software manager or a software package manager. It's really easy, you just go into your little start button, and then you go to your software manager, search for MonoDevelop, and install it. You don't actually have to visit a website or download or anything like that. Now, getting to Mono for the first time, can be a little bit daunting. Once you load up MonoDevelop, I highly recommend you go into the preferences and change your policy to Microsoft Visual Studio. This will change all your C Sharp formatting to look exactly what you're familiar with in Visual Studio. This is a very basic program that I wrote just to kind of test out Mono and see if C Sharp actually works on Linux. And indeed it does. Our cat is named Klaus, <laughs> so I decided to use him as uh, my example. Uh, basically, it's just a very simple program. It writes uh, a whole bunch of text to a text file called cats.txt. As you can see with the mono develop interface, it's very similar to Visual Studio. You've got your breakpoints here, your watches appear here, any errors appear here, tasks, these are all little 
pop-up windows that come up. Um, and also you've got your properties and your solution explorer is actually on the left side, not the right side. That kind of freaked me out at first, but you get used to it. <laughs> oh my god, you can write a console program in Linux. <coughs> can you do websites? Yes, you can. But you need a web server. Now to get this web server, I did a bit of Googling, found out, okay, easy. Back to the software manager, find mono dash xsp4, install it, done. Got my server. Try that again. Here's my wonderful website. And of course, being a website, I mean, you can do JavaScript and jQuery and kind of build upon that. <coughs> totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, this pretty cool program, Auto Screen Capture, is a little program that I use quite frequently at work. Um, basically, it takes screenshots of your monitors um, at an interval, such as every minute, every second, and up here, these are the days when the screenshots were taken, and you can even click on the slideshow and go through the screenshots that were taken on that particular day. Now, as you can see here, this is a Windows program. When you run auto screen capture, it minimizes to the system tray, and you can see there it's running. And it's taking screenshots now I actually have this program because I wrote it <laughs> and I uploaded it to github so you can download it from my uh, account if you're interested so I figured well how hard could it be to port this over to Linux copy and paste right easy yeah sure <laughs> I mean, websites were easy, console programs are easy, Windows programs might be easy too. All right, so I just put it in here. Here's MonoDevelop, my Solution Explorer, all the familiar interface elements here. Compilation errors. What the hell? What's up with that? Oh, unsupported properties. Well, that's not right. So you have to deal with these kind of errors. <coughs> You may run into quite a lot of them depending on how complex your Windows program is. However, I persisted after a few beers. Finally, it compiles. And this is what it looks like. That is a little Windows logo. <laughs> it actually says .exe, which was really strange to see in Linux, but wow, I've actually done a good job here. <laughs> but then it came to the little things, such as this particular command, this dot show in taskbar equals true, which means in Windows, obviously, you're going to show your Windows application in the taskbar. In Linux, however, this shows you an extra form that appears in front of your application, and it's totally blank. And whenever you resize this form, it resizes the form behind, and it's like a clone, and you can't get rid of it until you get rid of that command. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Here's something else I ran into. With my screen capture application, I can take screenshots of the active window. Now, the way I do this is I make calls to user32.dll, um, so I use a bit of interop stuff there, a bit of magic. Um, apparently I ran into some problems trying to do that because basically it just said, ah, screw you, I'm not going to take screenshots of the active window. I'm like, okay, fine, take it out. <laughs> well, what's left? It looks fairly like it's Windows cousin. I mean, you still got the calendar, you still have little tabs here, you still got your buttons. I mean, it's not pretty, but it works. Sort of. So 
So I started to run this and I thought, hmm, this isn't the directory that I specified. Now if you go back to, this is the folder that I specified. Look, home Gavin, development auto screen, auto screen code, bin debug, screenshots. Now, where are these files going to? Well, they're going to my desktop. Why are they going to my desktop? What the hell? <coughs> Ah, yeah. slashes. <laughs> oh my god. Look, these, these are all files. This isn't a folder. <laughs> this is not a folder. <laughs> these are files. Look at them. Look at the slashes. So, <laughs> this is what you have to deal with. Path names. Yes, in Linux they decided to put the slash the other way. Which actually makes more sense because forward slashes, I mean, they're forward, right? So, by driving you, you drive on the right side of the road. So, driving in Australia is the wrong side. <laughs> so, yeah, easy fix. Just go through your code, find anything that uses slashes, path names, whatever. Replace your slashes into forward slashes. Okay, that's fine. That's looking a little bit healthier. Now I've actually got my files all coming up here in my directory. Only one little problem. I didn't specify the limit of how many screenshots I wanted to take in this particular run. <laughs> so this kept going forever. <laughs> now keep in mind my Windows version of this program minimizes to the system tray. The system tray. <laughs> Linux doesn't have a system tray. Where's the system tray? Do you see the system tray here? Do you see any menu here for a system tray? There's no, there's nothing. There's no system tray. I'm just <coughs> staring at this console, looking, what, what, okay, fine. Death by tray it shall be. My program is running in the background, taking screenshots, wasting up my hard disk space. What do you do? Well, you have to open up a command prompt as you do in Linux. That's what I figured. You always have to open up command prompt in Linux. Now, this particular command is called process status, or for short PS. PS-A is to look at all your processes. You got your pipe there, so pipe grep mono. Grep is some fancy searching tool thing in Linux. Now, all your C sharp applications, when they're running in Linux, they're always going to be running in instances of mono. You're not going to see your process name up there, you're just going to see mono, so you have to look for mono. Now this number over here, 5235, that in the Linux world is called a process ID. This is the <laughs> command to get rid of it. <laughs> Completely nuke your instance. <laughs> Boom, gone. Take that. Okay, so when you're developing c -sharp applications for Linux, there are a few things you need to consider. Don't make references to the taskbar. <coughs> Avoid the system tray as much as possible. Try to be careful when you're using DLLs that use a 32, kernel 32, or that kind of nifty stuff. Um, and also be careful when you're trying to get the name of the user, because in Windows, there's a concept of the domain name, right? In Linux, they don't have Windows domain names because Linux isn't Windows. Now, there's another strange thing about MonoDevelop, which kind of sucks. MonoDevelop doesn't support WinForms, so all you people with your lovely WinForms applications, you're going to hate MonoDevelop because everything you need to do in MonoDevelop, you have to change your elements or whatever, you have to do it through the code. So the only alternative you can do is to use GTK <coughs> Sharp. So I tried this. I figured, okay, if I have to, sure, I have to learn GTK Sharp. Yeah, okay, I'll play around with GTK Sharp. Okay, so here's my, here's my calendar. I love the calendar of my program. Here's my little button. This is going to be my screen capture button. When I click on it, it's going to start the screen capturing. <laughs> GTK Sharp is not WinForms. Oh, no. I actually gave up because I have no idea what I'm doing in this environment. But I definitely encourage you, please, go out there, try C Sharp in Linux. You will find about 90% of your code will port over successfully. The 10% is just changing all the path names and all those little things. And that's it. Any questions?
which environment do you prefer now? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's a very difficult question to answer. I'm hoping to make a full transition to Linux. Okay. Um, you know, is it a performance, better performance, or? No, I'm just getting sick and tired of Microsoft. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, uh, yeah, I, I'm actually liking Linux a lot better now than I did when I first got into Linux back in university, which was back in the house there, there. And <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty mature. It's really nice to use. It's very graphical. You don't have to always go into a command prompt if you uh, can avoid it. How did you start your app, your your application? Because it's an EXE and Linux doesn't have EXEs. Did you yeah. just double click it and Mono was smart enough to figure it out for you? No, or? actually this is what happens. So let me open up my other program. So here you've got your executable. Now by default, it doesn't say open with Mono. It actually says open with the archive manager, which is weird because by default, the archive manager opens and it's like, an error occurred while loading the archive. <laughs> oh my god, you're trying to archive an executable. It doesn't make any sense. And that's what you'll find in Linux. A lot of stuff just doesn't make any sense. It's very weird. Um, so what you have to do, you have to go to properties, you go to open with, and then you choose a default application. And it's not so simple or obvious but you have to go to, I think it was computer, USR, user, bin, that's all the binaries in there. And then mono was like in here somewhere. So I finally decided, okay, there we go, that's my default. Set that as my default. So now I can just double click on a shortcut like this. And boom, there's my program. As you can see here, this is actually running in demo mode. So, it's taking mm. little screenshots of screen one. It's actually taking screenshots of itself, which is kind of a screenception. Making a very cool Doctor Who effect. <laughs> it's <not> flying. <coughs> now, my other program, SciChat, it's a little. IRC application that I wrote for Windows a very, very long time ago. And I was pleasantly surprised that this actually works pretty much first time. At first run, oh, there it is. This looks almost like it's Windows cousin, except for the fact that in the Windows version, there's actually a lot of colored text. So things like this. The Windows version actually has this text in like blue and pink and green and whatever. For some reason, the Linux version is just black and white. I don't know why. Any other questions? I just uh, <coughs> want to inform you that uh, just uh, if I found out recently that uh, Microsoft has a group yes. to move .NET over Linux and Mac. Yes. So. And I applaud them for that. <laughs> I've actually played with that back in December. Yeah, um, how was it? It it didn't work actually. <laughs> when, they, when, they, when they first uh, when they first um, released it, it's all coinciding with them open sourcing right. um, part of the .NET framework. Because isn't um, their ultimate goal to open source absolutely everything to do with .NET? Uh, probably not, because oh. so, so, I mean, what you're battling against here, particularly with WinForms, is that it's heavily reliant on. Windows operating system, right? The whole right. the whole Windows manager and the kernels that exist in in Windows have a certain interface, and and m most likely Linux doesn't have all those interfaces. Yeah. So Mono's left to kind of figure out, okay, you you want this call that you would normally get in Windows? How, how yeah. do I translate that to what Linux can do? Yeah. And in a lot of cases, it either can't do it because it, Right, or it's a very different interface. And Linux has very like a lot of different <coughs> window managers. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. really no standard Windows manager per se. You've yeah. Got, you've got unlimited amount of flavors that you want. Um, but I was able to get the the console and the um, the web components working, and that that's actually with the next version of of um, ASP. Yeah. Um, and, and that's actually really interesting. If you've not looked at that yet, they've 
the way they're even changing the whole configuration structure in the background of um, ASP.NET, MVC, whatever it is. Um, like all configurations are now like JSON files and mm -hmm. and the, 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 the whole, they really changed the whole dependency management, uh, even with NuGet. So what you, it follows more of that like Linux Ruby style of um, dependency management. Right. So when you're compiling it, just pull down the dependencies that you need and and work with it. The thing that was nice is it seemed to be a lot more native in, in the Linux world, but uh, there were still some some like issues they were working out, and it still relies on mono. Right. Like that is mono is the only interpreter yeah, that exists. So mono is like the new Microsoft <coughs> of the Linux development world. Right. Right. <laughs> So and in it, fact, I was actually pleasantly surprised to find up here. I think I saw the <coughs> saw the NuGet somewhere. Uh, Manager project. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of. Yep. Add NuGet packages. Yeah, that was pretty cool to see. To support NuGet. Right. Those of you who've used NuGet, you know what I'm talking about. So they've even they've even renamed it. Originally, everything was K. It was called K, and the web server they were using is Kestrel, <coughs> which is supposed to be based on. Uh, it's a type of bird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah, it is. So we've got penguins, cats, and birds. <laughs> right. Penguins are birds. Penguins are birds. <laughs> Thank you, Amaris. <laughs> so in Visual Studio, um, if you were to kind of disable your breakpoints, you usually go up to the view menu or debug, no, debug menu, right? You go to debug and you say disable breakpoints, enable breakpoints. So in Mono Develop, I was trying to find the same thing and I was looking through all these menus. Where the hell did they put that? Does it even have that? Well, actually, yes. You just right-click here and enable disable breakpoints. So, in fact, quite a lot of the features you'll find in Visual Studio, you will find in Mono Develop. Surprisingly. Any did other you, questions? Did you try VS Code at all? I did. I actually have it here on the track. Because I knew somebody was going to ask me about that. <laughs> <coughs> This is Visual Studio Code. It's just an editor. There's nothing really special about it. It's a text editor. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Is there a file open folder? Yeah, yeah try that on uh, wherever your, your source files are. OK, let's go to. Debugger and stuff built in here too, and it's got uh, everything. Oh, yeah. that's great! <laughs> oh, look, there's in Git integration. Yeah, very awesome. nice. They're, they're, they're they really want to be even better than Mono Develop is their goal with this, and cross-platform truly. So they, you know, they have a team of people building this and stuff. So hopefully, it's it's good. It, it's all based on top of an open source project, actually, that uh, gives them IntelliSense and, and all that stuff. So I, I haven't used it very much, but it looks pretty cool. At least it's got good design. <coughs> if I can open up my screen capture, see what happens. OK, yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, copy, cut, and paste. I'm glad they implemented this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right click, right click, and on like a variable. So I think they have like free name and, and that stuff. Oh, like a refactor thing? Yeah, like. Change the name of the form of the name. Okay. Change your code. I'm sure once you start typing, they'll all change. Oh, my God. Is that in Telesense, I see? Yeah, it should be. Oh, that's cool. It's based on like a project called OmniShark, which uh, should give them all the language sources and refactoring and everything. I, I don't know if it works 100% or, or not, but the, the cool thing is this also supports like Java and has a debugger for Java and stuff. Interesting. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and JavaScript and stuff. So okay. it's worth checking out if you if you do Linux dev at least. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <coughs> what is this doing? Oh, excellent. Oh, and apparently, if uh, you don't want to use Mono Developer or VS Code, 
apparently you can get C sharp bindings for Eclipse. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought Java was terrible. The Java is terrible. But, you know, they're like Eclipse, and if anybody wants to switch over from Java to C sharp, they'll be much happier using Eclipse. <laughs> so this is what Eclipse looks like. Yeah, no one's happy using it. It looks like you've gone to kindergarten, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Look, it starts off with tutorials because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Let's create a Hello World application in Java. Yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> Any other questions? How, how did you solve the <coughs> compilation problems uh, besides drinking beer? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, I just put my breakpoint in the main method and just followed through until I came across the, uh, the error. Um, it also came up with an actual message and told me which line to find that error. But most of the time, I just traced through my code because there were some really weird things happening. Um, not only with the, the two forms, the two windows coming up at the same yeah, time, that was really weird. Um, but there was also cases where it started to kind of, the, the calendar portion, it actually showed parts of the desktop behind the calendar for some weird reason, I don't know why. Um, but then after just kind of removing a whole bunch of stuff and basically reducing my application to the very weak form itself, Week's version of this form itself, it's uh, eventually got it working. Yeah. Did you find much support online for the bugs you were experiencing? Like, are a lot of people doing this, or? No, I don't oh. know. Yeah. That's rough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys, you know, feel like you'd get into Linux and use C Sharp in Linux now that you know that it's okay, it will run your Windows applications? 90% of your code will actually port over? <laughs> or do you guys feel like, no, I'm going to stick with my, my Mac or my Windows environment? Yeah, Windows. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there will be a trend because of enterprise applications that uh, some corporation may want to move from the Windows platform to Linux because it's already there, yep. things like that. So. And for the very fact that it's free, you don't have to pay for licensing, you don't have to start up. Yep. Yeah. So there's hardly any overhead. So thank you very much for coming. And uh, that's Kyle. Did you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to say, okay, Vagrant's a good middle ground as well. Yeah, Vagrant? So, where you can have a Windows box and you can have a Linux VM that has a dev tools that you want. And I, I think once you put on that next and it's Linux web server come out, that, that'll be more appealing for people to host ASP on that, ASP on that web pages in production. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I think it's a transition. <coughs> Any other questions? No? I'll hand so, it over to Morris. Well, you have all of your slides in PDF, and it was my job to put it on our GitHub. Morris. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm tired. Um, so I'll put that up on our GitHub. That'll be up for tomorrow morning. Okay. I'm kidding. Like tomorrow noon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe our GitHub is listed on our meetup page. If not, I'll also update that. But you'll have access to the slides. Oh, check it. You're on. Oh, you're looking at HackerNet. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll put that up. And then, did you have it? Like, is there anything anyone can work on to learn this, or any advice on that? If anyone wants to, I don't know. We sometimes have problems. Oh. Anyone? Other? Cool. Uh, thanks. For <laughs> <laughs> it's just about. <coughs> you guys can totally work on your own stuff and work on uh, tinkering with this, downloading stuff, asking people questions. Have at it. Moochair Wi-Fi, we're totally cool with that. Just Thanks don't download having. Linux. Oh, thank you. You'll never get a card from Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hard. Thank you, Mars. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you.